Okay, welcome back, Faith Walkers. And I'm hoping that you can see me. I know I say that all the time because it's, it's kind of dark in here and I don't have the lighting that I know I should have. And I do not have you on the um, tripod either. either. But um, I want to dive into some things that the, the Lord has been, um, he's been pressing on me for a minute to do. Uh, certain things um, and I just want to dive into it I'm not making this video long at all um, I just want to come and you know point out a few things that uh, has been you know dropped in my spirit as I've been you know researching and um, they just want me to come and teach some things that that I've um, He's been showing me through the word as I research and read the word. Uh, so um, I have bigger glasses here, of course. Uh, don't mind the rings a little bit around my eyes. Um, and um, of course, it's not what it's about, you know, when I get on here. But I do want to get on here to be kind of presentable. I had my hair done, so I took it out. But um, nevertheless, and I had my little my bigger specs here now. They're not um. They're not um, prescriptions, so you know they're 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 more of a magnifying glasses, so they're gonna look kind of big, and they might look kind of funny or weird. So don't laugh at me. <laughs> so I just wanted to dive in and come out of um, <laughs> come out of um, Genesis, right? And so. Um, It's this thing that goes around, and it's been going around for years at a time, about um, between the Adam and Eve thing with this apple, right? The Bible speaks, and God speaks, that there are trees that were made to um, our liking, right? And you know, for us, that was grown for us, um, you know, to eat from, you know, to buy, buy or from, and um, the thing has been going around, though, about this, this, this apple, I think I just said that, and there was no such thing with Adam and Eve, or with Eve, I should say, with this apple that was supposedly had been shared with, um, her husband, Adam, which he was the leader, of course. So, um, you know, I pray that the Holy Spirit would allow me to reiterate this uh, correct with you all. Um, let me see. I wanted to read. Because I have it together, as, as I always say, but I don't have it all good together. So, you know, I know God is going to be in the midst of this thing. So as I was reading, and I got to the part where uh, it speaks, like I said, about the tree of good and evil. Okay, it starts here. Let me see. Um, yeah, it starts here. It's Genesis 1, but it starts at the 29th verse mostly when he's talking about these these trees and whatnot, right? So, um, I'm reading the 29th verse of Genesis, and it says, and it reads, And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb or herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree yielding seed, to you, it shall be meat. It shall be for meat, it says here. And I am reading out of the King James Version. Um, 30th verse. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat. So it's saying, um, 
He's given herbs for meat for humans as well as animals, you know, the beast of the air in the, in the field. Um, and God saw everything that he made, and behold, it was very good. Okay, so I'm going to um, leave that part about the herb part and come over to the second chapter of Genesis. And I'm in now the ninth verse. And, it's, and it reads, And out of the ground may the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight. I'm going to read that again. And out of the ground may the Lord God to grow. So it's just basically saying, because a lot of people will say they don't understand how uh, the wording of the word is. I was the same way. But um, when it says, and out of the ground may the Lord God to grow, it's just uh, basically saying, stating that the Lord God grew every tree out of the ground that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. Now, you have to listen what you're reading there again. It says, uh, every tree he grew that is pleasant, he grew trees that was pleasant to the sight, right? That's your sight is your, is seeing with your eyes, right? He made it good for um, he made it good and pleasant for to the sight and good for food. So what is it that um, you can see on a tree that God gives you for food, right? And um, farther down, you will be talking about, of course. Um, trees of fruit right fruit trees which i haven't really gotten to that part yet because it's not even really saying that yet but we know if it's something that we see that we can eat right and it grows uh off of a tree and it's good for food it is um fruit right which fruit you know could be very well not very well but it is uh, is apples that grows off of fruit pears, um, peaches, stuff of that nature grows off of trees. I'm I meant to say I said grows off of fruit. It grows off of trees, correct? It's not stating though an apple or any of that, but we do know these are the things with our eyes, right, that we see that is food and um is what he has grown, right, for us to eat. Okay, so it says, ninth verse again, and out of the ground made the Lord God to grow, meaning the, uh, the Lord God grows every tree that is pleasant to the sight, every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree... And that is basically a, like uh, herbs and different things of that nature as well. Because the herbs came first, right, is what it's saying here in the 29th verse. First chapter of Genesis, we're talking about the herbs uh, bearing seed, and um, which was is upon the face of all the earth, right, and every tree, in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding to seed, right? To you it shall be for me. So it's talking about both of them there, the herb and also the fruit. The seeds from the herbs is what we eat, right? And then uh, the fruit of the trees. So uh, the ninth verse of the, the second chapter of Genesis again states, And out of the ground may the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. Now this is literal, right? As we always say, in the word of God is uh, mainly spiritual, but there are some literal things in there, right? He's not going to tell us that a uh, 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 hair grows on the trees, right, for us to see and eat, correct? That's not what he's saying here at all. 
he didn't say hair. And I'm just using that for an analogy and example uh, because of something else I was, you know, thinking about that I would do. I will do a teaching on that as well. And it's about hair. Okay, so um, and it's nothing religious. It has something to do with God. So um, going back when it says, uh, Lord God, to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. Right. So this is a literal thing. He's saying that he grew stuff for us that we can see, right? And that was good for food. Okay, so the tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now, the tree of life is God himself. He is the tree of life, right? That's a spiritual sense. Literally, it is God. So it's like a literal and a spiritual sense um, on that note, right? With those two. So uh, literally, spiritually is God, but literally he is like a tree, right? But he is the tree of life spiritually, right? A tree of life, right? Um, which meaning is meaning mainly a strength, right? A tree is like a strength, like, like strength. A tree is like strength or is like of strength right and um god is our strength right as that tree he says that we uh he is the vine right and that's part of the tree he is the vine i'm sorry and he we are the branches right and we become uh, strengthened through him through those um through the vine, right, being that we are the branch that's a part of his vine, right, and we draw strength from that, from him, that we abide in him, he abide in us, right, about the scripture about he's a um, vine and we are the branches, and if we could stay connected, that's what the analogy is, right, we, we could st stay connected to him, we would draw strength and, um, you know, life from him and through him, right, which is through his vine as we are connected as his branches, right? So it's like an analogy. Um, it's a spiritual sense, uh, but it's showing um, like a literal sense as well, but it's like an example at the same time that he's showing right on that note uh, spiritually that we should be uh, connected to him, right? In spirit, right? It's like in spirit and in truth for uh to gravitate towards him to gain um strength right and life okay so i didn't mean to go off on that right like that and it says and a river went out of eden to the to water the garden and from thence it was parted and became into four heads um I just saw something even within that part right there is letting you know that the rivers and the waters also, they water the garden. Like in the time of Garden and Eden, Eden, it is like, the water is like, um, I mean, it's just like us when we, we need water, right? We need water to uh, be, um, grow well, I wouldn't say grown, but we, we need water to, to live, right? Um, water, we do need water to grow. We need water to grow our hair. So um, the water here in the river, I noticed that as well when it says it runs through a river went out of Eden to water the garden. So it's, it's letting you know here that water is very prominent for us, whether it's in our bodies or on our hair or in the garden. And we are, I am rather, uh, talking about still parts of the garden of Eden. Uh, this is what Genesis is about, right? The very beginning of how he grew everything and, um, you know, the part of how, um, you know, he made Adam, 
first, and then he made uh, Eve, and then about the uh, what he told Adam and Eve. And I'm sorry, I should have did this from the beginning. What he told Adam, G, Adam, Adam and Eve, what they were allowed to eat and what they were not allowed to eat. You know, he was just teaching them uh, what it was that you know should have been done, right? So. Um, that part about the river was just an example of how uh, he let you know that uh, the river out of Eden was to water that garden, right? So it was like instructions. He was given instructions on what was for us, what was not for us, what, uh, you know, for to eat, uh, stuff to see, to eat, right? I hope I'm reiterating this correctly. Um, but um, okay, let me go down because I it, there was a part in there that gave scriptures on that, but then you know I would be going off um, course with that. But it does speak about the branches and whatnot, and who was part of the branch, which what is us, and the vine was is God. Okay, so going down um, the 16th verse of, of chapter 2. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden, thou may freely eat. Right? Every tree of the garden, thou may freely eat. 17th verse. But, he said, of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil... Thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eat thereof, thou shalt surely die. Okay. This here is spiritual. This part right here is spiritual, the 17th verse. When he said, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day thou eat thereof, thou shalt surely die. Okay, now it's not talking about food here. It's clearly saying the the tree of good the not the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You can't eat good, not literally, and you can't eat evil, not literally. Evil is a spiritual sense as well as uh good right now if you're you're talking about people places and things mainly like nouns right nouns are things that uh you can do um a person literally if you wanted to you can eat him right which isn't something that we wish we, sh we shouldn't do we're not supposed to eat people of course right humanity and human we don't do that Although some countries are, you know, doing the abominable things that God says not to do, right? That's another, um, that's another teaching. Um, so when it says, um, back up to ninth verse, every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food is what we eat, Right? So we eat things that we can see, but it's pleasant. A human would not be pleasant enough to eat because this is not what it's saying here in the word and it's not good for food, right? He separated us from humanity and beast, right? And he put them in their own category and um, habitat, right? Because it speaks it in the word. I didn't read it all. But it speaks it in that part before we get there to the part that we are now, right? It's saying, and God created great whales and every living creature that moved, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, right? After their kind, and God saw that it was good. There are things here in the scriptures, This is which is chapter, well, first chapter I just read you. And God blessed them, saying, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the waters and the seas and let fowl multiply in the earth, right? So that's a different uh, 
that's a different statement, different analogy, different example between beasts and how he made them versus how he's made us as humans, right? And what they are to eat. They are to eat the same thing as we are to eat. It says that here, herb bearing seed, right? It was for our food. Green herbs for our meat. It's saying here, right? And it says the same thing for us as humans, right? So when it said when it comes to a literal sense, we have to break it down. We have to compare it to what literal things are and spiritual things are. Literally, we can see something, right? Don't get me wrong. Spiritually, you can see something too if you have the spiritual eye that God has given you. Spiritually, you can see in the spirit, right? Through the spirit. But when it's speaking something sight-wise, and you can see right sight-wise in the spirit, but everybody can't do that, right? If God has not given them that gift, they can't do that. So to see something pleasant in the sight, right, that's good for food, is specifically saying it, good for food, then this is what we are to do, right? Um... And it speaks, of course, uh, in the in the garden. The tree of life also, it says, in the midst of the garden. And the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Then the tree of life, we can eat it as well. The tree of life is God himself. We can eat him, but we cannot eat him literally. We eat him spiritually. And spiritually, we eat him through the food, which is in the Bible. Right? Correct? That's his word. The word is what we eat to sustain us spiritually in a spiritual sense so that we can stay strong and sh um, full of strength and life. And um, as he said, to have at it more abundantly, like right within ourselves to grow spiritually. That's our spiritual food, right? So the tree of life is God. He's full of life. He gives it to us, he says, more abundantly, right? And... The light, the life of God is is what we receive right daily through food daily in our word, in our Bibles, right? Which is this right here, our Bible. You can see that I'm reading out of it. So that's the, the difference in the uh, uh, analogy or example of that, right? Um, the tree of life is like an analogy. And there again, it's spiritual. The tree of life is God himself. So he was in the, the garden of Eden, correct, as well. It said the tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And you may say what that is, right? And it speaks throughout the word that it was a scroll. Later on, it would be talking about a scroll, right? You can't eat knowledge naturally and literally so that's not a literal um example that's a spiritual example right so when god told uh, uh eve and adam not to go in the uh, garden and eat that right it says but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it right for in the day in the day that thou eat thereof thou shalt surely die so um, we already know then that was um, not literal. You don't eat something um, of good and knowledge. I mean, of, of a tree of knowledge of good and evil, I'm sorry. Uh, literally, there's no way that you can do that, right? Although uh, it speaks in the word where that's like a scroll. It's knowledge that was written on it. There's no way that um because there are lost uh bibles books of the bible right and, and it it says that they are scrolls lost scrolls that were uh found right and that's starting to come out but that's what it's always been um and i thought maybe i taught on this but maybe it was in spirit that i knew i was supposed to be teaching on this but i mean i've been seeing this and god's been um it's been in my spirit for a, a good uh, while now. Um, so um, 
It says, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Now it's saying that, and it's true. He said every tree we are supposed to eat of, right? But he was, he was saying the tree that is for sight that we can see and good for food, which was the fruit trees. There Are they not something that we can see and that something that is good for food, right? So uh, uh, naturally our mind goes straight to in our eyesight within our mind that we can see uh, spiritually as well. We know with common sense is what I'm saying that uh, the fruit trees would be fruit, like I said before, of apples, pears, you know, grapes, things of that nature. That's something that we can see, right? And that is good for food. So this is what he tells us to eat, you know, that will sustain our bodies, right? So that we our bodies can live and be, you know, we can be full and sustained and, you know, and grow and be healthy, right? And strong. Because these are the things that make us strong. Things that are attached to um, a branch, right? And that bear seeds, right? And that have seeds in them. Same thing, and then that's the literal part of it, but same thing with God. Uh, he is divine, right? And we are his branches that are connected to him. To him. And do we not grow st strong and grow strength from him as, his, uh, as he is our vine, right? That we are connected to, that we are the branch connected to his vine, which is connected to him. So, I mean, it makes sense. But, um, you know, if it's broken down in that manner, more often um, then we can understand that but the Holy Spirit will give that understanding to you and this is the understanding that is being given you know to teach again um, to make it easier because I mean it has not been easy uh, to read the word because of what the way the word is you know the way things are presented in the word but it's easy enough to be broken down you know one the Holy Spirit allows you, you know, to know these things or, you know, we give it to you. But it's also up to us to read and um, look at the different words and understanding the different words that it's saying. Because a lot of it, when you read it, you have to grasp it. It's, a lot of it is common sense. God has given us common sense as well, you know, as the uh, spiritual sense, right? Which is like. The common sense is literal most of the time, right? But it's through the knowledge of God. It's through the wisdom, you know, that he gives us. And if we don't act, if we don't have wisdom and knowledge, as he says in the scriptures, to ask for it. And, you know, they would give it to us freely. It's a free thing that, you know, to give. Just like it says here on the 16th verse of chapter 2 in Genesis, it says, And the Lord God commanded the man saying of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat he says he would give us freely give us things right freely eat freely give he said if we would ask the 17th verse but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it so he was a tree too god was a is a tree too spiritually in spiritual sense right and he stands tall above it all because i will read it when um, after this part here, right? Um, and it says again, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So God is the tree of life, right? But this one here says, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eat thereof, thou shalt surely die. And so why will you surely die? And it was talking to Adam and Eve. Why would they surely die? Because it was something that they were not supposed to obtain at that time. It was only for God himself, right, to know. And it lets you know farther down why it would be the only, uh, he would be the only one that he was supposed to know these things and not Adam and Eve, right? So...
19 verse, and out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the earth and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. Okay. Skipping down after um, Adam had made, I'm sorry, let me back up, not Adam made, after the Lord had made um, Eve for Adam, right, as his wife. It says they were both, 25th verse, I'm sorry, 25th verse, second chapter, and they were both naked, the man and his wife, which is Eve, and were not ashamed, right? Third chapter, now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, which was the beast, be said unto the woman, which was the serpent, the snake, right? Yea, hath God said, ye shall not eat of, it's the question, yea, hath God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And beside that, it's, it's, it has a word here, cunning, because that's the way Satan was, that's the way the serpent, the snake was. He was very cunning, right? Um, and you know what cunning is? Cunning is, um, uh, being deceiving, right? He was very deceiving. And the woman said, second verse, and the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit. See, Adam, I mean, Eve had already known what she was told, right, to eat of. I know this uh, is not 31 minutes already. <laughs> My gosh. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Eve already knew what she was told not to do, right? She was told literally not to eat of any other tree, but of the fruit. And this is what she was saying to um, the serpent, right? She knew. She was giving her words, or I should say God's words, back to the serpent, what was told to her, right? That she should not eat the fruit of the, the, the other trees, right? But only the fruit of the trees of the garden, right? So, going down to the third verse, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And what tree was that? That was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, right? That was the only tree that God has said not to eat of. And of course, he didn't even mention the tree of life to eat of, but he mentioned the tree of life, right? Because he mentioned the tree of life that uh, he grew, is what he was saying, in the garden. But that was not one of the trees to eat from, not literally, right? But that was one of the trees to eat from spiritually. But in this sense, he was saying not to eat of these trees in a literal sense. Like actually being able to open your mouth, put something in it, right, and eat it. The fruits of the trees were the ones, I might have said it backwards, was the ones that we could open up your mouth, right, pull off the tree and literally eat it, right? It didn't say that they could not eat the fruit. So apple was not even found in that notion that we could not eat, right? So um, this is the this is the thing that that had been going around for years that Eve had gotten an apple and ate the apple that she wasn't supposed to eat and shared it with uh with uh, Adam. No, that wasn't that wasn't it at all. That was not even the tree that they ate of. They had already said that God said, which is right here, said, and the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. So that doesn't make sense for Eve to have to get, have to get in trouble for eating an apple and sharing it with Adam because that wasn't so, that wasn't even the tree that um, they uh, were uh, exempt from, right? That was the tree that God gave uh, permission to 
Adam and Eve to be able to eat from, which were the trees, the fruit, the trees of, of the fruit, the fruit of the trees, right? If I'm saying it right. Uh, literally, the, the the trees of fruits that they were supposed to eat. I think I'm still saying it right. It said, we may eat of the fruit, of the fruit of the trees, right? The fruit of the trees and not the tree of knowledge of good and evil because knowledge and good of good and evil was something that was known right to man or was known to God that was supposed to be known to man so it was it's something that's known right in a um a knowledgeable sense right to know not knowledgeably in the mind versus out of your mouth eating right to be swallowed and digested the tree of knowledge of good and evil was it can be digested but not through your mouth it can be di digested through your mind right your knowledge your thoughts your wisdom something that you needed to understand something that they were going to be awakened of right uh to know that they weren't supposed to know so we will get to that part when we get down uh farther right to read it so this was the deceiving part after the woman eve let the serpent know what it was that they could eat which was uh, the fruit of the trees of the garden right uh she explained and let him know that 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 was that she knew really actually what it was that she was supposed to eat and the third verse says but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden god hath said ye shall not eat of it neither shall ye touch it lest ye die but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden god hath said oh mm, god hath said ye shall not eat of it okay but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden god has said ye shall not eat of it neither shall ye touch it lest ye die okay so here it's saying it was a fruit of the tree of good and knowledge as well but just like god has uh fruits of the spirit right this was the fruit of the spirit um so this was a fruit but it wasn't a a, a literal fruit that we eat out of our mouth that we can actually pick off the tree and eat and put in our mouth this was also a fruit it's a fruit of of knowledge of good and and evil right because we do have like fruits of the spirit you know fruits of love joy peace you know stuff of that nature but we don't eat that literally literally but we do eat and take that spiritually because that's part of god's word it's part of his, the fruits of the spirit of his spirit his character right so we are to be like that right spiritually so spiritually we have knowledge you know of good and evil because god would give it to you spiritually if you ask for it it speaks right in in some parts of the scriptures of the word right so it's saying here that that is a fruit of the tree as well that part i didn't see which i had it underlined but i didn't see that part as well but that is one of the fruits fruit trees of good and knowledge because basically it's like a fruit of the spirit but it's spiritual there again and as i was saying it, it's spirit it's it's part of the spirit part of the spiritual world right or spiritual sense thank you Holy spirit and it says in the fourth verse oh going back to the third verse again god have said ye shall not eat of it neither shall ye touch it lest ye die and the serpent said unto the woman which is the fourth verse ye shall not surely die now he was deceiving her when she had already knew the truth because they had already spoken god had already told them what to do and what not to do fifth verse for god do know that in the day ye eat thereof then your eyes shall be open this is why spiritual, <laughs> spiritual food um the tree of the knowledge of good and evil this is why they it was something that they should not eat right because if they had eaten this uh tree right spiritually f 
For God do know that in the day ye eat thereof, it says, then your eyes shall be open. So this, your eyes will be open knowing that it was something that was dead to us or dead to Eve and Adam and Eve at that time that God did not disclose to them at the, at the, at the moment. Just like us, we don't always know everything. Um, this is what the prophets and um, whatnot are there for. They come to disclose the mysteries of the word in the Bible of God, right? So this was something that was hidden from Adam and Eve that God did not want them to be aware of at that time. Um, so he didn't allow them to go and be a partaker of it is what it means when it says to eat of it. That fruit, be a partaker of it, right? Is what it's saying. So um, it says, For God, do you know that in the day ye eat thereof of that knowledge of good and evil uh, tree, then your eyes shall be open. That means to understand uh, what that tree was about uh, spiritually, what, the, what that knowledge was that the tree um, partake of, you know, or resonated with. You weren't supposed to eat it. Because if you if they were to eat that, it's saying that the eyes would be open like God, right? And God was the only one that had that that type of knowledge and understanding of good and evil. Uh, when He made everything, He said that everything was already good, right? So what else was it there for Adam and Eve to know, right? If everything was already good, everything He already made, He said was very good, right? In His sight. It was very good. Some of it said it was good. And then in the 31st verse, it said, And God saw everything that he made, and behold, it was very good. 31st verse of uh, the first chapter of Genesis, right? So if everything was already good, there was nothing else to um, disclose to Adam and Eve, right? Or to teach them. Everything that he had already said to do was just that. That's all that was supposed to be said and was supposed to be known, right? Um, so that comes along with obedience, right? So they were disobedient because they listened to the serpent and they didn't do as they were already told and already, that, uh, that God had already um, allowed them to know what uh, what it was that they needed to know, right? So, but they failed to be obedient and they um, went their own way, right? And they listened to the serpent. They were deceived by him, you know, knowing that we, they had already known. And I, I keep saying we because we as humans, we do that today, you know, knowing that what God had already given us. Is already given us a way out of different things, right? Um, but we always seem like taking it upon ourselves to go another way. We all already know what God said, but we take it upon ourselves to lift our finger, you know, and uh, go and do something more or above what God had already told us, you know, to do instead of, uh, you know, being obedient and you know, staying put, you know, in, in, in the position that God uh, had already put us in, right? And given us, um, it was already a good thing is what it's saying, you know, to know. And here, what he did not want them to know was about the, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Good things is just what it is good, right? And that's God all by himself. He He's already good, right? And in everything, he said he already made things to be good. So that was that was it. You know, that's all that was needed to be known, right? Evil, on the other hand, is different, which was uh, the serpent um, that had um, tricked or beguiled, I should say, um, Eve into believing that that uh, tree fruit of the tree of good and knowledge the, knowledge the tree of knowledge of good and evil would have been something good 
um, because it was good to God, because it, but it was rightfully good to God. It was something that was already meant for him to know, right? And not us. Because if it was meant for Adam and Eve, rather, to know, he would have already given that instruction, right, to um, let them know that, you know, this is what is good for you as well, right? But because it was only for his um, his knowing and his understanding, his eyes to see, right, um, that was just that. And it reminds me of that scripture, it comes back to what it says to trust in the Lord with all thine heart. This was a, a, a point where, in time where they were supposed to have trusted in the Lord, right, with all their heart. And they were not supposed to lean to their own understanding. And that understanding really wasn't their understanding. It was coming from Satan. But if we continue to listen to um, the things of Satan, you know, and this serpent and this beast uh, to tell us, then how are we going to know what it is rightfully that the Lord is speaking to us and that he want us to know if we continue to uh, give our ears and our attention, right, to the enemy, right? We have to close off our ears and shut our ears out to the enemy, to the things of what he wants us or what he feels as though that... Um, we need to know and to hear, right, and to um, process, right? We don't uh, look to evil. That's evil. Satan and this serpent was evil, right? He came to um, deceive, right? The, the, when the scripture says that how the enemy comes to kill, steal, and to destroy, he was literally trying to already kill them, right? Because everything that God made was already good. Evidently, uh, not saying that he he wasn't good because every like I said, God made everything to be good. We don't really know why he uh was like he was because there again there were scriptures that were taken out of here that would tell you what it is. There is a Bible, and I have not read it yet, but I've been taught it and I've I've listened to the teaching on it about Adam and Eve. I have to get that book of Adam and Eve right. And it goes into different things deeper of um, Adam and Eve. And you wonder why certain parts in the Bible that we don't understand fully because it's like something is missing here, you know. And that's one of the parts right there about the serpent, right? That uh, part about that serpent is missing uh, in here. And I mean, it, it states something in here about how... Uh, he was one of the, um, okay, it was all, it was, it was in my, right in my face, the third chapter of, um, Genesis, as I was saying, um, it already said about how the, the, um, serpent was, it, say, it says, now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made, you know, so, um, meaning more cunning, more, uh, like I said earlier, more deceiving than any, you know, more wise, more smarter than, uh, and not in a good sense, but uh, more wiser than any um, beast of the field that uh, God had had even made. It, it was like he was too wise, as they, as they used to say in the olden, olden days, um, you're too good for your own britches, you're too smart for your own britches, or something of that nature. So he was too wise for his own good, right? Um, in some sense. So, um, going down, um, and by, by, like I said, about the, the different scriptures and the scrolls that were missing out of the Bible, um, and I did, I did not know at one point in time that there was a book called the Adam and Eve book or Bible, right? Just like some of these books, the Genesis, Genesis is a book, um, Leviticus is a book, you know, different things of that nature. They were books of the Bible, but they were taken out. Um, yeah, so it's saying, um, I said, but, of the, but the fruit of the tree, which is a third verse, but the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. That was deceiving. 
um to um being deceiving to so they they he, they could be tricked right because there again uh the serpent comes to kill steal and destroy right destroy I mean when you, you you destroy something you kill it right it dies so it's, it's saying it right here he's part of the evil sense right so he alerted her and convinced her somehow to go ahead and do it. But we should, when we know the truth, we should not um, be convinced otherwise. And the Bible speaks that these, are, these that know the truth, the truth shall make you free, right? So God uh, is freedom and his life. But on the other hand, Satan is for um, evil and he's for death, right? So, um, you know, dealing with Satan, your life will be cut off, is what it's saying completely. But dealing with God, you would have everlasting life. But at that moment, he did not, we did not, or Adam and Eve did not even need to know um, good and evil at that time. Because everything in the sight of God already was good, right? It said, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes... And a tree to be desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat. So it, there again, it's not talking about the literal fruit she took to eat in her uh, mouth, right? Because there, it's impossible to for that fruit to give you knowledge, right? And understanding of good and evil. Even though if God wanted it that way, if he appointed it that way from the beginning, it would have been that way if that's the way he wanted it for that, uh, for fruit, literal fruit that was seed bearing off of trees to give us knowledge and understanding. But that's not what it was saying. There was no way in the world that uh, Eve had grabbed an apple and ate it and shared it with her husband, Adam, to give for knowledge and understanding no it wasn't that type of fruit it was a spiritual fruit that she had gotten like i said with that book uh adam and eve that would sum up whatever it was altogether between the the two these verses here of uh good and evil the knowledge the tree of knowledge of good and evil versus uh fruit in your hand literally to eat off of a tree that's not the tree that they were even saying that uh, Eve even got it off of, right? Even got the fruit off of. Fruit literally was a spiritual sense that was brought to her or that her mind was opened up to uh, for good and evil. And the reasons knowing or saying, knowing good and evil, say when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to eat, eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise that's what it's saying she took up the fruit and did eat it spiritually she took it in whatever it was that she saw she saw it and it was like a written something or something on that fruit knowledgeable it was knowledgeable in a spiritual sense that she saw this is the part that's missing here like a scroll because it already said in in one scripture uh before somewhere where it said how um uh, you ate a scroll and it was bitter. It was sweet as you as you ate it, but as it hit your stomach, it was bitter. I would have to find that scripture. But as I'm saying this, um, it's good to do your research. When I said it, look it up on that part, and it's literally in the Bible when it speaks about a scroll of of knowledge or whatever, right? That would be eaten, but it's eaten spiritually in some sense. But in the in back in the day. It, it, it was like a literal thing when you read it, but in 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 the spiritual sense, that's what it was. When it hit your stomach, it would become bitter, it says. So that's another uh, teaching. Um, so and it says, and when the woman saw, which is the sixth verse, that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree to be desired to make one wise, she took other fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Right, so it, when when they ate it, it was it was a it was a sense of knowing something that they found out, 
and their eyes were open. And it says, seventh verse, and the eyes of them both were open. Do we not digest things in the word and the Holy Spirit will end up giving it to our understanding of some of the word and our eyes become open? It's like, whoa, I didn't know that. I didn't see that before. You know, I did it. I've done it today. It's like, well, oh, I didn't see that just now. I just said something of that nature, and that's something I didn't really see, right? And this is what had happened. Their eyes were open, knowing um, when they found out what that uh, tree of the knowledge of good and evil was about, that's how their eyes became open. It's like, oh, my gosh. Wow, I didn't know that. It was some sense of knowing, some sense of understanding that they uh, obtained right spiritually and it says and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons right so um going down to the and the lord okay ninth verse and the lord god called unto adam and said unto him where art thou and he said i heard thy voice in the garden and i was afraid because i was naked and i hid myself and he said, who told thee that thou was naked? See, everything was already good. He didn't even need to know that they were even naked at that time. Because whatever he made at the time was good. That's the way he wanted it to be. Well, the way things were that he made was the way things were supposed to be. As far as the herbs, the seed bearing herbs and the fruit bearing seeds. Herbs bearing seed, I'm sorry, and fruit bearing seeds, right? It was good for our meat. It was made for us to to eat, right, as our meat, right? It was already the way it was supposed to be from the very beginning, right? And he said, I heard that voice in the garden. I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, who told thee that thou was naked? As thou eaten of the tree? He knew right away that they would grasp a hold of that knowledge, right, of knowing that they were naked uh, through that tree, which he told them not to partake in, right? Not to eat of, which was spiritual. It's a spiritual sense that they got some understanding. See, that was the understanding of the knowledge. That's what knowledge is, right? Understanding. Wisdom is understanding. So they get all the knowledge and, and, and get understanding. The scripture was, what is it, knowledge? Something about knowledge, get under. With knowledge, get understanding, or something of that nature. I know you all know what I'm talking about, but I can't get it right off bat. But that's what came to me. Okay, so it's still brewing in my mind, but I can't get it. But this is what it's saying, right? Um, the knowledge and understanding that it allowed them to know that they were naked. And they would have never known it if they hadn't got partaken in that tree, they hadn't eaten it, the fruit of that tree, right? Of knowledge of good and evil this was part of what he didn't want us to or them to know that was the evil part in some sense that could have stayed where it was because it wasn't good to see yourself naked that's the evil part of it right so that's what that was and he said who told thee that thou was naked how has thou eaten of the tree he knew then that they ate the, the wrong tree of the wrong tree where I commanded thee that thou should not eat. And the man said, The woman whom thou gave to me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And that's another thing. We, as individuals, we're not going to go to heaven and be judged, or wherever we're going to be judged, for uh, the next person attached to us. We're going to be judged for ourselves, right? And judgment is being taking place right now, really, actually. And But we... We, we are judged for ourselves. We're not judged for the next person, right? So we can't sit and point the finger at the next person and, and, and say that, well, they made me do such and such. And no. It's going to be uh, required or on our, on us particularly, right? And specifically uh, of what we do and we partake in, right? Whether it's, whether it's the right thing or the wrong thing. Like if it's something we should have partake in and we didn't do, or whether we once, you know, we we weren't supposed to do, right? So it said, and he said, "You has thou eaten of the tree where I command thee that thou should not eat?" And he said, "The man said, the woman whom thou gave to be with me, she gave me of the tree, I did eat, and I did eat." And the Lord God said unto the woman, 
What is that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. It's still up to us to have that mindset to not allow the enemy to move us in such a manner that is against God himself, right? Same thing with our partners or whoever we're with or whoever is around us. It's up to us. We can't have no one influencing us. And it they can influence us, but it's up to us to um, partake in that influence, in, influence, right? To grab a hold of the influence. Do we want the influence of evil or do we want the influence of, of good? Do we want the flu- influence of Satan or do we, do we want the influence of God himself, right? God is not... These are the things that God don't want for us. We, he does not want evil for us. Um, he does not want bad influence for us. But he wants everything that is under him, right? That he's already said was good. That he know is going to be able to help us and for us to get through, right? The right way with, with him. And not um, something that's going to lead us astray, right? away from him so it said the serpent beguiled me this is what Eve said and I did eat and the Lord God said unto the serpent because thou hast done this thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field upon thy belly shalt thou go and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life so basically there is no literal sense in what Eve had eaten. There was a spiritual sense in that of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Um, To my knowledge, I just found out if that's still true, because, you know, some people have written the word and they, they say they wrote lies in it, but I'm feeling that because of what they see in there is because of the books that were missing, that were taken out, that does not fully explain what it was uh, that was in those Bibles that we don't see in this Holy Bible that was taken out. And it kind of puts like a barrier in between, you know, it, it separates some things, you know, and it doesn't bring it together like it needs to be. But there was no literal apple that Eve ate and shared with her husband, Adam, to be deceived by this serpent. And in conjunction with this, um, there again, Adam was the leader, right? Adam was made first in God's image, and second, it was Eve, which was his wife, right? Because he made, God made uh, Eve for Adam, right? So that that he would not be alone, he said, right? To do the things that uh, needed to be done, you know, on the earth, right? With the animals and, you know, and whatnot in the land, which he gave to us everything, right? Free, freely he gave it to us. It was free. So why, you would think now, why, you say in a sense, why are things not free now? Because it was switched over to evil, right? After that, good and knowledge, the knowledge of good and evil tree was eaten from, right? Spiritually, in a spiritual sense. It was obtained from in the mind, in a spiritual sense. This is when things uh, uh, were sidetracked. They got off. So, uh... Of course, literally, we can't eat what we want, but literally, we could eat the 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 fruit bearing trees, uh, seed bearing trees, herbs, and things of that nature for our meat, right? As well as the animals uh, to stay healthy. So there was no apple. Once again, in conclusion, literally, that Eve ate to obtain knowledge and understanding. It was not, because that's not the tree that um, was said that was uh, was good to eat from. If that was the tree that was good to eat from with the fruits bearing seeds and all, and herbs, then um, why would it be wrong 
for her to eat. Why would it be? Why would he have said, um, the tree, fruit tree of the knowledge and, and of good and evil, was wrong, if it was a uh, part of the apple, apples and 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 fruit of that nature, we were able to eat. It wouldn't make sense for the apples for the apples and and uh, oranges or whatever it was of fruit we were able to eat or we wouldn't be able to eat. Am I saying it right? <laughs> Dear Lord, I don't want to make it seem like it's, uh, I'm confusing you, but the literal thing, literal sense is apples on the tree, literally that you can pick right with your hand and eat it in your mouth. The knowledge of the tree, the fruit knowledge of good and evil tree was the, the knowledge in the mind, right? Something that was obtained through understanding, right? Uh, they both were for to see, right? But one was for the see in our hand that we could grab a hold of to put in our mouth literally to eat. That was the fruit that we could eat, which would have been an apple, pear, orange, grape, whatever. But for to say an apple, um, Eve uh, had obtained to eat that he shared with his husband to allow them to open their eyes and see and to know good and evil was not so. It was not true. That was a scroll. It was it was uh it was literally words of knowledge that was eating spiritual in a spiritual sense to let them know that they were naked, which one supposed they weren't even supposed to obtain to know about, right? So, uh, you know, when we're reading, we got to get some understanding, you know, but we have to ask the Holy Spirit to give us that understanding. And sure enough, it would give us the understanding, you know, to open our eyes spiritually to know what it is that we're supposed to digest in a certain manner and that we're not supposed to digest, you know, in another manner, right? But um, it's all good, whether it's literal or spiritual, but it's, it's, um, it's a way that we have to distinguish what is right, you know, and what is wrong between the two. Yep, so that would be all because this video was definitely not supposed to be no uh, hour and so minutes. If I knew how to cut things out of this thing, I, this video, I would do that. <laughs> but um, hopefully they would let me um, upload this video. Um, into this full whole part. Um, and, you know, you all be blessed. And I will be back again when I know God is going to allow me to come back because there were some things still I need to <laughs> uh, touch bases on. So, um, faith walkers, stay in faith and be blessed.